Hi everyone, Squire Twiz here. Another model unboxing, you lucky folks. I haven't done any of these for ages and now you're getting loads at once. Another airfix kit, just because I'm going through my stash. Uh, this is a Miyoken Gurevich Mix S17F Fresco. Or the Chinese version, the Shenyang J5. The uh, reason I'm doing this one is it was I bought a mystery box from Airfix. You pay was it £22.99 or something? You get three kits. You don't know what the kits are, hence why it's a mystery box. Uh, this one I bought at the beginning of February. This came with their Mark 1A Spitfire and a P51 Mustang, which you are I'd class as their beginner kits. I've used several of those over the years with the Air Cadets. They're very basic skill level one kits, lacking in detail on that. Uh, so I'm not unboxing those, but this was included as the third kit. Now, being an FX Club member, I get 10% discount. So I paid less than 20 quid for three kits. So I don't care that the other two were really basic ones, even if they're only worth a fiver each. Uh, this was a nice kit to get in there. Well, I'm hoping it's a nice kit. I never built a MIG. So we'll see. Standard box on the front. One flying hour club point. Two variants. So one's the Chinese, the one's the Russians. You've got what paints are needed. It's a skill level two, so not too complicated. According to this, it's 155 mil long and 144 mil, 134 mil wide. 84 pieces and again standard box fairfix. Let's take the lid off. Use your instruction sheet. Airfix has started to get better with their instruction sheets where they're just over A4 in size. They're crisper. Text is readable a bit more than it used to be. So the blurb about the plane, the stats for the planes. And then we're on to the kit. So again, usual airfix, nice layout. They tend to always start with a cockpit. And we just see two part for the seat, very basic seat. But the cockpit itself, made out of several parts. That's uh, rather than having one tub and then doing it, it's actually got quite a few bits. Pilot. Include it again, Airfix, one of the few that still do pilots for one seven second scale. Nose weight required 20 grams. I've said it before if you're building these kits, you normally need to put a bit more weight in the nose than it says, uh, otherwise, it'll be a tail sitter. Holes to drill, so make sure you drill those before you assemble or decide whether you want them in. It looks here. But there's a few bits that may need to be cut off, pegs and that. Not entirely sure why. One to be cut off, one to be filed away. And this likes to do whether or not the undercarriage is up or down. Not decided yet, I might do this with the undercarriage up. The advantage of that is I can hang it from the ceiling. I don't need to use any of my shelf space, which is getting desperately low. We need to get some more shelves soon. So fairly clear guidance from Airfix as usual. So they're getting really good with their instruction manuals lately I found. I'm not sure why there seems to be a barrel to prop up the uh, tail. That's a bit confusing. But there you go. And then we have one paint scheme. So this is, it won't come out on camera very well, but it is a dark green uh, and medium green, I'd say, variant on the colour scheme. So that's not grey. That says matte marine green and dark US green. With the wings being a silver on the side. This is what I would call the patchy camo scheme. So if you're doing it on an airbrush, probably fairly easy to do. If you're doing it with a brush painting, not so easy. But this is obviously, it says here, Vietnam People's Air Force, Towers 1, 
August 1969. So this would be the Chinese one used by the Vietnamese. It's still the MiG-17 because obviously the Russians sold to the Chinese. And then we got here the Russian variant from the 1970s. Overall silver. Now for this particular kit, because of the nature of the camo scheme for the Vietnamese one, I'll probably go with the overall silver Russian one uh, as it's simpler. Though I think I prefer the look of the camo scheme. The Chinese one is just, I ain't that good with the airbrush. I'm not sure I could do it justice. So an overall silver one, keep it nice and simple. Decals. Fairly basic, lots of small decals. Then you've got Vietnamese and Russian symbols. So not a lot really for the main decals. So look at the uh, clear parts. They're not looking too bad. A bit dusty it seems, but not as clear and crisp as I've seen on some of the other kits lately. They do look a little bit dustier and a little bit, I don't know, not as clear, not as bright, not as sharp. This is a Airfix standard grey now. I don't believe this is a retooling or anything. This is a kit that's been around for a number of years. But this is a light grey plastic. Some bits of flashing on there that don't look right. I hate that they put these little, what are they, venting plugs in places. I don't know if they snap off. You've got, yeah, definitely some flashing there. But that's sharp edge of the tail, that's going to be a bit of a pain. Sunken panel lines, I think it tells that it's one of the newer ones, not one of the old 80s kits. It's looking alright. Some detail on the engine, nozzles. Uh, not really much to say about this. This is looking alright. Just three sprues plus the clear parts. It's the wing sections. Again, looks like possible. Some flashing in places, but not that much. Minimal flashing, I would say. Nothing that will detract from the kit. Um, yeah, there's a bit of flashing on parts there. But it's not a lot. So this level, the details what I expect. Not overly detailed, not that many parts, but looks like a, yeah, a nice, easy kit. If you've only built one or two, or three or four, I should say, more kits before, this could be the next step up. So if you've only ever done uh, Airfixers, Spitfires and Mustangs at skill level one, this would be a nice kit to go to for skill level two to move up. But overall, I'd say it's an average kit. Uh, not much more tied to that. So, Squire Twist saying, happy modelling.